Welcome back. We're doing breakfast with Kelly this morning. This is going to be bacon and eggs. This is kind of a beginner one. It's a real basic one. We're going to do a San Juan worm and we're going to do a, a nuke egg. Uh, we're going to do the worm first. So we'll go over that. Uh, hook wise, you know, y y there's just any, basically any hook. I like to tie them on a scud style hook. I'm going to use a, uh, I, I've kind of gone to both these flies using barbless, so I use a lot of the fully mill hook, the uh, 5065s in this particular one. Uh, the body is going to be a real complicated thing. It's uh, chenille. This is just ultra chenille. It doesn't unravel. Uh, so I'm going to show you a couple things about that so we can speed things up. And then it's just any any what any thread you've got it doesn't really matter six aughts what I use just because it stretches it's really fast but before we go through that I want to show you just a couple things uh, you can see here this is a really simple fly and it, it's a great box builder there's a lot of people get get their panties in a wad about fishing eggs or worms and I can assure you there's been billions of fish caught on both of them they're great they're great to start a fly they're great I, I don't care if you're a guide you got one of these in your box somewhere. I have no idea how many thousand steel that I caught on egg flies. Uh, they're just, and they'll eat an egg or a worm almost year round. And so great for kids, great, you know, indestructible, so fast you can tie them, you can build a box instantly, you can do a bunch of colors. And so just a couple of things, I'm gonna show you, I told you we're gonna use this ultra chenille. I'm gonna show you how to cut this thing in advance. It, you know, obviously if you're gonna do different sizes, basically, I mean, I, I basically tie mine in, in my, I'm going to do the worm first, the bacon. Uh, that one's going to be about two inches long. All right. I'm doing it on a size 12 hook. Um, and again, that's, that. I, most people I think tie them on scud hooks because, you know, you're doing a 24, 57, any of the scud hooks you want. And this is kind of a lighter wire. But I want to show you two things. But we, this is Jeremy when, when he was tying them for the shop. And I'm going to show you two things about setting these up in advance. I'm going to one with the skein like or the uh, the card like this, and then one with the with the skein. And this this was something that when I was tying them for the shop back in the days, when just they're just little tricks that help you go a little bit faster. With this particular trick, you're going to have if if you're going to do skein, this is the last of the earthworm skein that ever that I think that was ever made. I got both of them. Uh, but at any rate, this, this thing, when you, you've got to have something as a, as a guide. So I've got down here, I've got this, just this pink worm. Can you see that right here? Kind of, yeah. Kind of barely? Yeah. There you All right. Go. That better? Mm -hmm. All right. So the first thing you're going to do is people will start cutting and laying. If you'll take this and just stretch it out so you can see where the end of that is right there. So you can see the, that's how long, that's a two inch piece of this stuff. So you don't cut, you, you always go like this to the end and you gotta have a mark, something that tells you. Like when I did it, I just put a, a, a pencil mark right there. And so all I would do is I'd take it to here and I could just sit here and I could just roll these things without ever guessing, you know, who cares if it's a quarter inch this way or that. But this way you're getting them exactly the same length. So that's one way to do it. This is another way if you take the skein, Jeremy showed me this trick. You come in here, you cut the bottom of it off, and then you just stick your scissors right through underneath this and just cut as you go. And you'll go right through it. I prefer to use my bad scissors for that. Just go right through, and they're all cut. If you want to turn it around, great. If you want to just hold it in your hand, just pick it off of there. Every one of these will be on the line, and you just cut every one of those to two inches long. So there's your, I mean, it took you seconds to do that. You got one left over here. All right, so then you've got a whole bag of these things ready to go. They're just super fast, it's cheap. This fly, like, I mean, here on, the, on this river, and especially in the spring, man, we, we use the worms a lot because if no matter if it offends you or not, it is an enormous food source on a lot of rivers. And especially in the spring when you flood, I mean, on this river, you know, this is a freestone. This is a boulder river for all the way down, right? And you wouldn't think of it as worm or a, a worm river. You go down to $3 Bridge when it's raining and it's blowing up 
and it's a uh, there will be you can hardly walk there's so many worms on the bank on the bridge i mean they're everywhere right and those fish will just pile full of them so it really doesn't help you if they're on a full-on worm feed to decide you're gonna not fish one i fish them uh match so, the hatch. yeah match the hatch so here's how the we're gonna tie the flies may not uh, that's all the prep so we're gonna take the hook i'm gonna use brown because i'm using this is my earthworm color that you can't get any more of it. I mean, as long as I'm tying, I'm gonna tie one for myself. And I like to contrast with it. Like if I'm using pink, I'll use the burgundy thread for the, the little, I don't even know what it's called, the little ring around the worm. But it just, I just, that's whatever you like. And a lot of people just go tone on tone. But, so it's a, like I said, it's very quick fly. So just start your thread. Great time to practice your thread control if you're just starting to tie. Uh, just hold your thread off to the side, get back their ways. If it's nylon, you can break it. And I, I mean, everybody probably has a different way of doing this. I come back, take the worm. Basically, I put it in the middle. Uh, I, if I'm going to have it longer on one end, I like the front to be longer because the back's kind of sitting back like this. And that'll, it's hooked to you, so it'll kind of fold around and move a little bit. So just, you know, roughly get it somewhere in the center. Pinch wrap it, just get one or two turns here i go forward i usually do i do that twice and then i come forward just shy of the head and i make this little mark whatever that ring is around the worm right there and then i go in front of it don't hook it and just finish it i i am not going to i am not going to glue this i'm not going to do anything and with this new ultra chenille you don't really have to burn them in the old days you had to burn them because they'd unravel, so you just do that. I, I would generally do that with them after I'd done a whole bunch of them. But because it's so fast, so simple, you're generally running in, you know, in the spring a lot more than any other time. I like the front to be a little bit longer than the back. Totally personal. Whatever you do, you do. They'll eat these things like crazy. But it's a fast, you know, you build a fly box up. It's a confidence fly. Fish everywhere in the world will eat a worm. And so it's a great fly, and again, really great for kids, and a great starter fly. So that would be the bacon side of this. Now we're going to do an egg. Uh, the first, you know, everybody's seen uh, glow bugs. Uh, I never really fished glow bugs so much. A buddy of mine back in the early 80s gave me one of these flies. This is called a nuke egg, this here, and it was Walt Grau. I mean... Well, it's one of the most innovative tires I've ever seen. He gave me one of these, and it was in chartreuse, and he had red wool wrapped around the hook underneath it. And I, I truly thought that the guy had gone crazy. Not, nothing would ever eat that. My first cast out of it, I get a fish, and it was like, oh, crap. And then I lost it, and I couldn't remember how he tied it. So I put a little spot on the top, and not how I, I don't know how, you know, how he did his. And so... And then, that, then we started wrapping it and making it thin. And the, the beauty to this fly, A, it's a very quick fly. Eggs are an incredible food source in the spring and fall, depending on what your fishery is. If you've got salmon in a river in the fall, you're going to have tons of eggs. And again, it's kind of what people think it's dirty or some reason. It's, it's just matching the hatch. Uh, I quit fishing salmon while I was still guiding them in the last five years. We decided we'd just fish trout. And we would fish eggs behind the beds, never fished for salmon. And we, we did the same thing I'm going to do with this one. We did everything barbless. And I'd really encourage you to do that with eggs and worms both because they tend to eat them. And if they eat and then come down, they go. It's easy to pop them out. You're not going to hurt the fish very much if, you, if you've got a barbless hook. So uh, this one's going to be going to have a few things here. There's two. There's two. There's egg yarn, which... And, and again, it's personal and make fly foam. Um, the egg yarn is a little easier to work with because of the, the McFly foam is a little sticky. And you'll see, you don't even have to touch it. And the next thing you know, you get the, if you've got any sort of stuff on your hands, they stick to you. And it's these little, it's just, it just hangs there. there. And, it, and if you do any type of work with your hands, which I'm encouraging Johnny to try, uh, you'll have your hands are rough and so it'll get stuck in you a little bit but I'm going to use on this one I'm going to use a um, this is a the same as the fully mills uh, hook. this is going to be the 5025 
And I, and I like my eggs. I don't know if you saw that, but that's this hook. The other hook that we use probably, this is the 1640, or the 1640 egg hook. Uh, any egg hook you want, I don't care. I just like the short shank. You want it to, you know, people like that. And they like the deeper bend. Mostly when we used to, you know, when they would do glow bugs, which is a round egg. This is all on top of the hook for the most part. But again, I like this lighter wire hook. It's a barbless hook. It's a, it's a, called a claw. And so just the, that's the style of the bend of the, the hook. So again, this one's going to be very quick. And I'm going to use, and again, thread is really, you don't, it, it could be six out. I tied them on six out all my life. This is 12 out Semper Fly. My favorite three colors of this fly, Oregon cheese, chartreuse, and my kind of ace in the hole for fall steelhead was a baby blue with a orange dot in the middle. I'm going to do the traditional, just kind of the, the cheese, the, the, the darker cheese color with an Oregon cheese over the top. So it's just kind of two-tone. That's what this one is. I'm sure you didn't see that. I just kind of ripped it in there. All right. And But the beauty of this fly, what you're going to see is how it becomes, and I think this fly almost always will outfish a hard egg in that it's just translucent and it, and it moves a little bit and they just seem to like it. So we're going to start this thread. And again, this is one that a good, you can practice on this. I come back about to the halfway point and if you're using nylon, you can just pop that. If you're using GSP, you can't. I take this stuff and McFly foam comes kind of thick, right? And it's harder to break apart. If you're using regular egg yarn, it'll come in a thing like this. And I take about a quarter of a piece of egg yarn. There's just really no way to tell you exactly. But if you're using McFly, which has become pretty popular, one thing you can do is you can stretch it and it'll take a lot of that, the, the kinky stuff out of it, and it won't get quite as stuck to you, and you can see it about the same size. But So right there, when you stretch it, that's about how thick it's gonna bounce back, but it's about like that thick. And I'm gonna move forward to the one quarter, one quarter from, of the hook. You see right here, I started in the half, I came forward, and I'm gonna take, I'm gonna set that on top, one, two, three, and then I'm gonna go under it, one, two, and I'm going to move right to the eye of the hook. I'm going to spin this. And again, it's how big you want that dot to be. I don't want it very big. It's going to be, it's going to be covered up completely. And then I'm going to take about a quarter of a standard piece of uh, egg yarn. Not, the, not a big piece. You can see I'll, 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 on this size fly. On this, if I was fishing bigger like Great Lakes Steelhead or wherever Steelhead, if you have salmon flies or salmon flies, if you have salmon in the river and you're, and you're matching that egg, I'm going to use about a third of a piece of this. So on this little one's going to be, this is, and you know, if you're fishing stocker poppers and you're in you're someplace where you've got a lot of planters and stuff like that, and they fish a lot of eggs for that, then I'm going to use the smaller one. But you can see the difference, you know, over there. This is, this would be the bigger size. This is going to be like the little trout egg size. So it's about a third of a piece of that or a quarter of a piece of the egg yarn for this little nuke egg. So I'm just going to set this and, and it helps if you cut that flat. See how that's a flat cut right there? And I'm going to put this on the back of the hook and I'm going to put that the length I want it to be, right? So I want it to be just, just a little bit longer than the egg itself. And you're simply going to do a soft wrap around it. Just one wrap like that, two, three, draw that right through the eye of the hook just like that see it and finish the fly and you can already see the translucency to this fly you can see that little nuke egg inside there and i'll show you, i'm going to get it wet so you can see and so just wet your fingers just a little bit come in here and go to the back side the same length as the other one and you cut it and there's this little ball right and if you look inside, can you see in there, Jeremy? A little bit. <clears throat> when you look inside here, I'm going to turn it just a little bit. I don't know if you have to refocus. And so maybe you can see. But you can see inside that uh, ball of yarn, it's not much. And I'm going to get it wet and show you why, why these are so efficient. Okay. In goes the water. And you'll see 
I just gotta get it wet here. You can see now inside that there's that little nuke. See that? It's just, it is so sexy. And they eat this thing alive. And so, I mean, this was, if you're, if you haven't fished them or if you refuse to, that's all right. But it is a, they're both really, really good uh, flies to start kids tying. You can build, I mean, you can just sit and tie them, tie them. You don't have to worry about gluing them and doing all that stuff because they're expendable. It's, I mean, they're, you're, you're going to use them in a hurry. So that's Breakfast with Kelly. I hope you liked it. I hope it helps you out.